Ladies and gentlemen, welcome, welcome back to the Just Acting Up show. We have a special guest. I got to say thank you so much to this queen for getting up <laughs> early in the morning. Lady Gigi, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. I am honored. Uh, we're four o'clock this morning. Yes. yes. Thank you for four o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Alexa. Oh. I think Jesus just say man does, <laughs> but okay. Yeah. Oh my goodness. We, we, we are honored. We are thankful and grateful for you just, you know, stopping by and just, you know, and just talking to us. We, you know, we see everything that you've been doing with motivational speeches and you know, I, it made, it, trust me, there was one morning where I was just going through it and I was just looking through my phone and I saw like, oh, what you posted? And it was something motivational. And it hit and just made my whole day better. It really did. And we appreciate you for that. Uh, uh, that, that touches me now. That, yeah. that really does. Because actually, a lot of times when it comes to the inspirational posts, they are truly off the cuff. You know, it's not like mm -hmm. I wake up and say, you know, today I'm going to talk about this or today I'm going to say this. It's something that just really comes to you. And I definitely went through a period where I would say, now, am I really supposed to be saying that? Is that you talking? You know, you mm -hmm. know, is that really something God laid in your spirit? And that's just Gigi talking. And I got to a point where I, where I started feeling, or I still feel, as long as one person ever tells mm -hmm. me that what you said did something for me, then it was worth it. You know, it's not like looking to see, like, how many views was it? I look to see if anybody said, that's what I needed today. Wow. Then it lets me feel like, okay. Then it's not you. You're not operating in you. Because yeah. that's what I don't want to be. Yeah. I don't want to be operating in me. I want to be doing it definitely for everybody else out there. Yeah. yeah. I love that. I remember love when I first that. came across your page, that was one of the first things I seen. You was like, look at me. I look at the sky. And I look at me. Mm -hmm. Oh, day. yeah. Oh, man. When I say. Seriously, had just went out there to water the plants. And I was just like, man, it's kind of, it's a beautiful day, you know. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, see, you know, because maybe where somebody else, you know, they maybe they didn't have any plants to go out there and water. They never reason to step outside today, you know, but for some reason we will get on our phone, we will get on our social media. So if that's how you, you know, reach people, if that's the device, the tool, whatever you have, then it's like, okay, I'm, I'm going to use this. Some, somebody going to see it's a beautiful day out here, <laughs> you know, so <somebody laughs> you know, gotcha. oh, that's yeah. cool. Yeah. Oh, that, uh, that. Oh, go ahead, Jen. Oh, no, I was going to say that's that's beautiful that, you know, you do that as well. And you you grab, you know, like you grab a nature and like how the spirit just hits you and you just like you speaking it from the heart. And I love that you do it. Like because like you were saying, it just sometimes, you know, the Lord just working with you and that spirit just hits you. You just like I just want to share that 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 little bit of it. And I love that. And I feel uncomfortable if I don't do it now because because now that you know people are paying attention it's, it's like I used to be in the classroom with children and it's it's like seriously if you when you know those kids are sitting and they're looking at you like this you know like teach me something I like you you know then it becomes an obligation almost in your heart like I can just walk in this classroom and not be prepared for these babies you know mm -hmm. they coming in here like hey Miss Gonzalez hey yeah bye mama you know so they're coming in with this excitement today you know it's like I want to learn I want to be here so it's like now you feel like well if they these little bitty ones can come in here and they can act hungry you know, I can come in here acting like I'm ready to feed them. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. perfect yeah. sense. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, let me ask, how was it going from like uh, when you started to notice that a lot of people started following you and you gaining more and more followers? How was how was that that transition? We were like, wait, look up all these people like just watching my post and watching what I'm doing. I will tell you, probably the first 14 days were a little weird. Mm -hmm. Um that's a little weird, a lot of weird. <laughs> because <laughs> first of all, I found out about the viral video from someone who used to be, uh, I've been children's director at, at a couple of different churches or the older church. She had been one of the teachers. Hadn't heard from her in a couple of years. And she texts me, she goes, Miss Gigi, you know, you're going viral on Twitter. Well, number one, I go, 
I'm not sure how that's possible, dear. I have not posted anything on Twitter. <laughs> so, well, you're going viral on Twitter. And I said, oh, send it to me because I don't know what you're talking about. So literally, that's what it was for about the first couple of weeks. It was people texting me to go, do you know Snoop Dogg just report? What? You know Lizzo? Just, what? You know, it was just like, so it, it really was this like me. You know, and I don't know if everybody goes through that, but you do. You kind of feel like, wait, they read something I wrote? They reposted mm -hmm. something. I, so it is surreal that that, mm -hmm. that many people, my, my oldest daughter, she was, uh, I think it was something that he had, oh, on the TikTok creator account, that's what it was. I was looking at the analytics, trying to figure out how all this stuff works now, mm -hmm. paying attention. And it said something about, I'd had 3 million views. That's just across all my posts. And she goes, mom, can you imagine that 3 million people have noticed you in the last 60 days? Mm. I said, you know, she's out, I, I, I don't even know 3,000 people, <laughs> you know? <laughs> And, and yeah. when people start to to put it to you like that, and you start to notice it like that, it, it again, like I said, it becomes a little heavy at first. So I went through a very much like whoa, and then whoa, mm. and now it's kind of leveled out, you know, because I, I literally had to go to a couple of spiritual people and go, "How y'all do this?" <laughs> you know, <laughs> because people ask you some very deep stuff. You know, mm -hmm. tell me what what advice would you give a twenty seven year old who who, who, who hasn't had a relationship work out, you know? Oh, wow. You know, what, what would you tell a person whose child is doing this? You know, well, I really don't think I'll ever find a man. What, what's your opinion? Mm. Baby, I ain't got a man. Right. <laughs> you, know, <laughs> <boy>. <laughs> you know, I know they say some who do do and those who can't teach. So I guess, okay, mm. I'll teach it then. So I can't, you know, but, uh, but like I said, it becomes a, a very heavy responsibility that you don't take for granted. So I'm always quick to say, I'm not a doctor. I don't have any type of degree. I'm talking to you from experience. I'm talking to you from love. Mm. And as long as I leave it in that lane, everything feels good. You know, like I said, but right after that whole like, whoo, this is exciting. It, it took a serious turn. Like this is a responsibility. Mm -hmm. you know but this is young people people my age my church asked me to come speak and I'm like what <laughs> <laughs> me? are there any single pastors going to be there you know, no. <laughs> 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 you, know but, you know you know what what was a good godly lipstick color <laughs> you know, but but it, it it I tell you though all of it put together the most the greatest thing about it is feeling like the things that you went through in life, you didn't go through them for nothing. Because yeah. there were many, many years where, where you feel like, why am I having to go through this? You know, why why is this not working out? Or when something starts working out, why does it go bad again? Why do you keep, you know, when people talk that roller coaster, it's like, can I get off the roller coaster? <laughs> <You know? laughs> but can I take now, a break, please? <laughs> yeah, you know, I even, I even likened it one time with exercising and being on a treadmill. And it's like, right when you get in that stride, like, okay, I, I got this three, what is it, like three on the elevation, you know, you pick that number, mm -hmm. got your mm -hmm. speed, and you're like, this feels good, and somebody just snuck up and just popped it up to 10, and you're like, mm. wait a minute, I was trying to get used to three, you know, couldn't we have went to four? Like, then, ah. it steps. Yeah. You know, but you learn life just, it don't work like that. It, oh, it, you have to take it the way, the way it's issued to you. Great, I agree. Yeah, my, my, my favorite video is the one with the mosquitoes. <laughs> no, no, Lady that's Gigi my, does some funny. That's my favorite. That's my favorite one. Yeah. The one with the you know what? Yeah, like. <laughs> and again, that came out of pure. That's what was happening, and it hit me. There's a TikTok related to this, and I went, "Where's that TikTok? <laughs> where's, where's that TikTok?" <laughs> you know, and literally while I'm looking for the TikTok, I'm fighting off these mosquitoes. You know, I'm still. I got so many suggestions, Michael, of what to do with the mosquitoes. On the <laughs> it's like none. get a Ziploc bag full of water and put some pennies in. I'm like, really? Really, exactly. I did not know that. Hmm. I didn't either, and I can't even remember. So, I'll get a get yellow cardboard and put it up. They don't like yellow, and I'm like, oh, okay. I got really? a bag of pennies out there right now. Okay, I'm just saying, you really okay. Maybe, you know, this is 2021. I might have should have up the nipples. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
Oh my gosh, that is too hilarious. So tell me about like, com how okay, so comedian, actress, mother, grandmother, you have all these, how do you, you know, balance all of this and handle your videos and everything? I was curious about that. Well, one thing, <laughs> you just mentioned something that I have to tell people that they don't realize I am not a grandmother. Okay, go I see. I have never been referred to as a grandmother until I did that one TikTok. Okay, right that's what the I beginning, And I saw it and I lost my teeth at a very early age due to an illness. Mm -hmm. And I was in, doing comedy in the theater, doing all that, said, I, I'm never going out again. Nope, not doing this. I look, you know, I look like an old lady, you know. And, you know, God just put that in, in the comedian side and said, turn it into a character mm. and so miss mary was a character that i did on stage and people always this is what i tell people if my teeth are in this is Gigi. my teeth are out that's miss mary <laughs> you, know, <laughs> that, you know but i did that tiktok because it just yeah. fit it just fit with the great yeah. thing so suddenly i became granny to everybody and that was something to deal with as well because i'm like I'm not really that old, but, you know, I just had an old soul, you know, but it, it just all ended up working together as far as um, the, the comedy has always been the way I coped with life, even before I was performing on stage, even as a child. I mean, I was very much into my imagination and pretending. I still tell everybody, I dated Michael Jackson and Donny Osmond. They used to fight over me all the time, you know. That's just the way it was in my house in the den by myself. So comedy was just a way of coping. Uh, write, I, do, I write as well. I produce, direct, do all mm -hmm. that that I've come up to do. But all it, the entertainment field, you know, it's just something that I think I naturally migrated to because that was a coping me mechanism. Gotcha. I like that. I like that. So with all with all of that, and I think it's I think it's really beautiful that, you know, that you seeing that, you know, Snoop Dogg and 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 uh, Lizzo and everyone's looking for inspiration because we're all going through something in life. And you know how it is on social media. You scroll in and you see something crazy. And, but I think it's the good part about the amazing part of what you do is you have that calming voice. And then you bring them, bring us all down from the, you know, the craziness of the world and saying like, look at this outside and just like, or turn on this, you know, motivational, this, this uh, video or this, this um, massage like video to, you know, just let your mind wander and to calm down and, you know, get your spirit right with yourself. And I was like, man, and I actually did that a couple of times on one of my days. I was like, I'm at peace right now. So and I was like, yes, it did. <laughs> it really, I was like, man, I feel like I'm going to work like, like <laughs> hey, I'm telling like, you. <laughs> so, that no, only works a, for hey, me for like five minutes. How you doing? Minutes. Yeah, that, only works here. For, that only works for like five minutes for me until I actually have to go to work. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what, Michael, that's a good thing that you bring that up because that's one thing I've also tried to tell people. Sometimes you have to do it every 30 minutes. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, depending on who you are, you might have every 15 minutes, you're like, ooh, we, I need another five, four, three, two, one, you know, <laughs> but, you know, but literally it's, it's, again, it kind of goes back to almost like exercising, you know, you can't, yeah. you just can't go to the gym one time and you think, right. yeah, I put in 10 minutes, I'm ready, hey, look at, look at my guns, you're like, you ain't got no guns, you ain't got no bullets yet, you know, you're going to <laughs> have to keep putting in some work, so that's right. a very good point that you have to remind people, it's not a, an automatic cure, you know, it really is just, it, it, it's like letting the pressure out of a, a, a tire, mm -hmm. you know, that's just got way too much air in it. And it's like, if I don't release some of this somewhere, I'm going to blow. Mm -hmm. And depending on who's in my way, you're going to get affected by it. Ooh. So if I can just take a minute, you know, and go, Ooh, you know, before I not only hurt you, uh, I'm hurt myself, you know, and then you have to go back and apologize for this or, you know, Okay, are there any other jobs available? <laughs> you know, oh, yeah. oh, 
Because oh, yeah. you just said the wrong thing yeah. to the wrong person. <laughs> and really, you just needed a moment, you know, because mm. I, I have moments. So it's not, I'm, I'm not operating out of some unrealistic place. It's, mm. it's like, I still do it. You know, it's like I haven't mastered it. Am I better at it mm. now than I used to be? Yes. Mm. But do I still have my whole... Oh, Yes, I still have moments after those margaritas. You know, one thing, <laughs> alcohol, one thing alcohol will do for you is what? It's Give you the ability down. to tell all the truth. Because yeah. you tell the truth, but you know, when, when, when you're in that certain space, it's like you know how to temper yourself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you, know, you, get a, you get either too tired, too liquored up, or, or too upset or whatever. And it's like... Okay, now let me tell you what I really thought. <laughs> I, gave, <laughs> you know, I gave you the other version, you know, but but you have to practice it. You have to practice it. And even if you mess up, you know, you got to be woman enough, man enough to say, you know what, that didn't really come out the way I meant it to. This is what I was really feeling. You know, I, I, I had a, a, a teenager on a live call one night and she wanted to know, I just don't understand why my mom hates me, you know. You know, and she never she does this and she says that. And I thought, guys, it's like, wow, what what a great question for somebody to ask me because I grew up with a mother who hated me. Thing about it was I also grew up side by side with other classmates who said their parents or mother, fathers, whatever hated them. The only difference was I was able to see later in life, my mother really did hate me. Mm. those parents were just being parents and the kid didn't like being parented and I explained to her I don't know if your mother hates you or not because I don't know you personally but this is what I can tell you is the difference between the two because if your parent truly hates you you getting beat down, you getting cussed out, you're getting mm -hmm. little, you know, you're not being supported da 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 da, da. if your parent is parenting you're going to look back and say, because they did that, I grew. Because they did that, I was protected. Because they did that, I knew they loved me. Yeah. See, but you got to go through that and you got to have that those kind of glasses on. Because if you're a teenager, it's just like, why can't I stay out after one o'clock, you know, and I'm in the ninth grade? Oh, you're just mean. You get a little older and you go, oh, bad things happen to, you know, 14 year olds who are out after midnight, mm -hmm. you know, right. now it's just like, you now me, I, I never dated, you know, it was like, you can't talk to boys, you can't do this, you can't do that. Then you grow up and you, and you see that was a hindrance mm -hmm. that wasn't a help because I, I was very immature person in relationships. So, so you'll get to a point where you can, you'll be able to figure it out. You know, but I had to just let let them know, just don't assume your parents hate you. You know, parents have, they have to be responsible for you. You know, mm. this can't go letting you go out there and be buck wild. You know, no. you know, so you, you, you got to understand that parenting is not easy. I wish I had that voice of reasoning when I was a kid. <laughs> I feel like my mama oh, hated oh. the ground I walked. <laughs> Let me get one of my children in here so you can say that for me, please. <laughs> like, come here, come here, come here, baby. Come here. I'm Let me talk to you. Tell you boy. Michael, say that again one more time. <laughs> <laughs> right though, uh, I can remember like a lot of things I didn't understand when I was younger. Like the older I get and go through more stuff in life, like I understand, okay, that's why. You know, they had raised me this way, and that's why this was this way growing up. You know, a lot of stuff, stuff we don't understand as a kid. You know, they say just keep living, keep living. You know? That's it, right? Keep yeah. living. But now, I, I would be remiss not not to add on the other side of that because I have parents that come on there, and they're they're asking some of the same questions from the parent perspective, and I have to remind them that they're raising children in a different time than right. what we were raised in so they have to adjust as well you know mm -hmm. you you can't just up and say no across the board to everything because we're, whether we want to accept it or not other children other people outside the home have a stronger influence than we do whether we want to admit it or not because depending on the situation our kids spend more time with them than they do with us so you just can't act like that influence doesn't exist and just say, well, don't do what they do, you know? No, you got to sit down and explain why. 
and or just a little bit. Okay, well, you know, trying to tell a, a girl or boy right now, well, you cannot talk to a boy or girl until you're 17 years old. Oh, mm. that's not going to work. That's not going to work today. See, back in those days, you probably met plenty of other girls who were not allowed to talk to boys until they mm. were 17. It was normal. You got little seven year olds running around popping, talking about my boyfriend. And they got their <laughs> phone, and you like, you got an iPhone 12 and you're seven? It's like you're not even 12. That should be a minimum requirement. You cannot have an iPhone 12 if you are not at least 12. I agree with that. I yeah, totally yeah. agree. Yeah. But we just have to adjust and we have to learn to listen. That's a big thing I'm hearing when I'm talking to, or hearing from people. People don't feel like anyone's listening to them. And again, mm -hmm. I grew up feeling that way. So as long as you get to my age and you don't forget what it was like, and then you can say, I didn't like the way I felt when that was happening to me. So you just can't be that adult that goes, well, you just do it. You'll, you'll understand later. You know, you've got to put a little both in it. You'll understand it better when you're older. Mm -hmm. But here's some little nuggets that might help you deal with it better mm -hmm. today. You remember that movie? Which one was it? Was it Boys in the Hood when he told him, he said, you just watch and see how things turn out. Right. Yeah. yeah. When, it, uh, when he told his son that, and, and that's what a lot of it is. It's like, yeah, but he still let him hang with them. It's just that when you come home, it's like you went out there and got dirty. And then when you come home, I hold you down. <laughs> 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 you know, I mean, watch all of that off of you and then tell you, you know, why I'm doing doing it this way. So if I can do that for somebody, no matter whether they're, you know, the, the littles or the olders, you know, I've got people older than me asking me stuff. And I'm like, wait, should I be asking you stuff? Like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I just turned 59, you know, you're like 80. <laughs> I think it's because, <laughs> I think it's because the way you carry yourself and the way, because like I was saying earlier, like people will listen to others that have a calming spirit and a calming voice in the way you carry yourself. And that's what they, I believe that's what they see with you. And that's what I see with you. Like, I would rather go to the person that's calm and cool and collected to get more advice from than going to that person that's always yelling and snapping and yeah, all the lie. So I'm like, yeah, yeah. I, I think we need more teachers like you back in my time. Cause my teachers used to get, <laughs> they used to get on me. <laughs> I appreciate that. I appreciate that. that. That's a goal. That's that's a value for me yeah, because is. young people have to feel like if I can't go tell mama or I can't go tell daddy, you know. Who can they go tell? Who they gonna yeah. go tell y'all? Yeah. And then when something happens and, they, and then the parent or the adult, whoever it is, is like, why you didn't tell me? Mm. Did you create an environment where they felt safe to tell you? That's, that's mm. how I am with my son. I'm open to everything. Uh, because I know how it was when I was a kid. You know, my mom, you can talk to her, but it was, you know, it was certain things like, mm, I ain't going to tell my mama that. Right. You know? yeah. <laughs> like, oh, no, I ain't going to tell her that. <laughs> so with, with my son, I just, all I ask him to do is just to be truthful and like stand by, you made a mistake, you tell us, you know. Yeah. Because I, I know how that how that feels, bro, in the household, household where you can't really, you don't have anyone to talk to. And I was I was actually embarrassed, like in my twenties, when I went off to college, of all the things I didn't know. And I consider myself very well rounded <clears throat> for the time period I was in. I mean, I I went to private school my entire life. We were kind of black socialites, you know. So I got teased for being, oh, you go to private school. Oh, you talk like you're white. Oh, so you yeah. had that, you know, all my clothes came from Neiman Marcus, blah, 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 you know, all wow. that. But then I went off to college and people are asking me things like, can I be real? Can I be real, real? He was, mm. you've never seen an X-rated movie? Oh, what? <laughs> you know, it was like, oh, what? <laughs> you know, yeah. and it's like, you you never dated? Like, no. You never, you've never been to such and such a restaurant? No. But I could tell them like, oh, I, I, I know I know these professional golfers because my dad was a golfer. You know, I, I, I knew this person or that person. But in the realm of like, what was that doing for me in my development? Nothing. Mm. 
you know, nothing. So, you know, when I went to college, you was like, I did not go buck wild. I just feel your brains going there. I, I just feel your thinking. No, no, you're fine. No, I'm, you know, no, I didn't go buck wild, you know. <laughs> but I just like, zone. what's that? You know, a frat party? Okay. <laughs> you know, like, what's that? <laughs> you know. It's like pledging, okay, you know, and uh, now it's not the same, of course, as it was back in the 80s, because if I tease the college kids, I know they're, yeah, I play as a little sister, and they're like, oh, what? Mm. Like, don't tell nobody that, okay? Like, <laughs> <laughs> if you ain't legit, legit, it don't mean nothing, but back in my day, being a little sister meant something, but mm -hmm. all right, I guess I'm telling my age a little bit. That's okay. You good, you good. You know? But yeah, you got you got to have a well-rounded. Yes, <laughs> man. As far as your uh, your comedy and the acting, is there anything that you have coming up that we should be on the lookout for? There was, and unfortunately, due to COVID, <laughs> mm. <laughs> it just got postponed. Um, I don't even know if we're officially allowed to have it. They sent us a notice. So I guess I won't say what comedy festival that it was, but there was a local large comedy festival that I was going to be a, a part of for the second time uh, th this year, but they have decided because of the COVID rise that we're not, we're going to postpone it. So as of anything official on the schedule, no, a lot of unofficial <laughs> things coming up. Other people have, bless them, invited me to be on their podcast. Uh, so I have some of those that are, need to be scheduled. Uh, I've been invited to do a couple of uh, conferences, which I thought was like, Really? Yeah. And uh, so I have a one women's conference that's coming up hopefully in November that I'll get to be the comedian, you know, for. And uh, so, yeah, just a lot of invites right now. People that, are, again, are seeing and finding out about, like, we didn't know you did comedy. We just thought you were funny. <laughs> you know, so like, oh, baby, I get paid. <laughs> right. Right. Bring on the checks. No, just kidding. But, uh, but no, I do, really. But, <laughs> but, you know, but it's on a very local level. I think I like it, you know, that way. Uh, people want to know, like, do you want to go on to do bigger? It's like you never want to put God in a box, you know, so whatever mm. comes comes but am I seeking that no I think I love the 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 level that it's on now where you actually get to talk to people who you know to them you're still somebody reachable yeah. you know and I guess because it's new to me I feel like the higher you get sometimes you become unreachable yeah and mm. that scares me you yeah. know, I, I it, it just seems scary that somebody, you know, make, I, well, I need to, re, I need to answer some of these, you know, messages on Instagram. It's like, no, no, you, you know, we're on stage and it's like, oh, okay, but this person really needs me right now. Yeah. So that, that just kind of, yeah, I'm like there with that. But I do have some plays that I've written that I'm going to be submitting out that people are like, send them to me, you know, these community theaters are looking for stuff. So I'm, I'm definitely going to get back into that. I love rewriting old classic uh, 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 fairy tales like the Hunchback of Notre Dame and, and uh, Snow White. I, I wrote modern day versions of that that have been performed on community stages. And again, as people are finding stuff out, they're like, send that to us. <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, man, you know, I've written children's books. I do all of that. So it's crazy, you know, I know COVID has done so much bad, you know, in the world, we've lost so many people, but yeah. I tell people, it's also brought out a lot of positive, you know, people were stuck at home, and they had to figure out, like, what am I going to do with my life, you know, yeah. while I'm sitting here, and that's where that first one came from, it's like, I know you got books in you that you want to do, I know you got songs, so if we're sitting up here, and we can't do anything else, when this I, I tell people it's never going to be over. It's just going to become more manageable. So yeah. when we get a more manageable place with all of this, what are you going to be able to say you did with that 12 months, 18 months where you were just sitting up going, I don't want to learn how to make no bread sticks, whatever, you know. Okay, <laughs> yeah. so what do you want to do? You know, you do? so that's where that came from. It's like figure out then here literally we were granted a time where, where it's like, okay, pause. You're always saying you don't have enough time. Now you and somebody hit the pause now. button and said, okay, here's time. Yep. Mm. Now what you going to yep. do with it? So I agree. that was like, okay, search your hearts. What, you know, people are out saying, why don't you do a podcast? I'm like, why don't I do a podcast? So, you know, <laughs> you know, now you start thinking, you know, what's all out there to do? And I think people just, 
they I don't know. It's it's just I guess you're so bogged down with life. Yeah. That you don't give yourself time to think about what else can I do? Or you see somebody doing it and you think, oh, I'm too old or I don't have the education for that. But we're living in a world where that doesn't exist anymore. It's like exactly. nobody cares whether you finish college anymore. <clears throat> you, yeah. you know, nobody cares whether you have a degree in that or that or if you've got experience. You can get the experience. Jump on out there and do it. You know, the first time I did comedy many, many years ago, and this will someday I hope go down in a fun fact about a book somebody may write about me. Who knows? But it was like <laughs> the first audience I ever had was over 3,000 people. How many people can say the very first time that they step out and do something that was kind of on their bucket list, you know, it's like, you know, I've always wanted to do stand up and it's like we were having a church 25th anniversary and the pastor decided let's have one of those uh, Apollo night Mm -hmm. talent shows and just let everybody just come do whatever. He was like, go on, Gonzalez, do it. Go on. I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. You know, it's like, ooh got out there on the stage and it was like it was very scary but during the rehearsals it was like literally once I got on stage and started doing it and I'm hearing people laughing it's like this doesn't feel like work this feels very natural you know and then when the show you know you know there's nobody in the audience but the the people in the show and the very first night that we actually did the show and you look out there and the church is full yeah and you're like Ooh, this feels different than rehearsal. Okay. Caught that bug. Yeah. yeah. But I got, you get out there and you get started. And then you start to realize that it felt okay. It wasn't as scary as I thought it would be. But just imagine if I hadn't done it and had just stayed in the back going, I don't think I can do that, mm. you know. So yeah. I think people just sit back and tell themselves they can't do something because it feels uncomfortable. But it's like we were talking about earlier, it's not gonna be comfortable until you keep doing it and keep doing it and keep doing it. And now when people say, How are you able to get on stage? And it's like, because I don't look at it as a stage anymore. And that's just I'm just out there talking to people. <laughs> I'm just out there telling them some stories that they go. That didn't really happen. And you go, honey, yes, it did. <laughs> you know, you know, you know. And, and, and letting people know. I've met a lot of people who want to get into comedy. You know, right. says, I can't do it. I'm like, you don't tell some stories at Thanksgiving that have everybody at the table cracking up. That's comedy. Mm-hmm. That's comedy. That's comedy. Yeah. Man, let me tell you about now. <laughs> everybody got an Uncle Leroy. <laughs> you know. Uncle Peaches. <laughs> Uncle Peaches. We might need to talk about Uncle Peaches. <laughs> <laughs> I got a Peaches. I wasn't expecting that one. I wasn't expecting fruit this moment. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Can I ask just one last Go question? Go ahead, brother. Go ahead. Okay. Are you, you from Texas, right? Are you from Texas? Dallas, Texas, born and raised. Oak okay. Cliff, if you know, if you know the hood. If, if you know from the oak, oh, oh, from the cliff, huh? All right. <laughs> so, oh, okay. I, I, um, um, okay. You have any family from Graveland? I have to ask because I got probably people scattered out, and my daddy was a Rolling Stone. Lord have mercy. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just put it this way. We might need to do a DNA, okay? I, I got to <laughs> ask. Like, I, it's just for some reason, that's in me to ask because this lady at the bank was like, your last name is Tolliver. I said, yeah, do you know a such and such, such and such? I said, I don't know. Well, who's their dad? <laughs> 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 <Man>. well, <laughs> I am adopted, and I okay. am the product of um, uh, Papa Was a Rolling Stone, so... We think daddy, daddy, but mama definitely wasn't mama. And okay. so I, I, I don't know. I tell people all the time, I have to be careful who I'm talking to. You might be a relative. <laughs> you know, and I just don't know it. Thank you. So, Thanks. So, okay. so your last name, Gonzalez. So. I, ma- I married him. Okay. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. 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 Yeah. Okay. I, okay. I, 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 I like, like, I like, I like being a black okay. woman with a Latino name. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, no, no problem. He, he goes, baby, you 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 you're gonna keep Gonzalez? I say, yeah, I like. He said, okay, you like. <laughs> I say, it's okay with you. He says, it's okay with me. It's okay with your woman. It's okay with her. Yeah. 
Oh my gosh. Shout out to Oak Cliff America. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I, no, I ain't gonna show you my, my Oak Cliff bottle back there. I didn't know we got our own label. <laughs> I didn't know it. I bought it just because it said Oak Cliff. <laughs> oh my gosh. Nothing wrong with that at all. And uh, oh, what, what grades do you teach? And then I know we'll get you on out of here. Well, I'm out of the classroom now, but I used okay. to uh, do three, four, and five year olds. That, that that's my that's my ah. sweet spot right there. Gotcha. Oh, okay. Gotcha. But now now I, I'm still with children's ministry. In children's ministry, I do all ages. Right now I'm more on the admin side, so I just get to love on everybody. You know, so I got back into it just this year, actually. So just finally got off of virtual, got back into it. And my daughter uh, got into that uh, position of serving as the children's director of the church where we are now. So it was kind of like, let me go support my baby because it's her yeah. first time where I've been around that rodeo a few times. And then the bug just hit me like, oh, I miss you little people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, so now I just love them all of them. I love all. I, I love kids. I love kids and old people. She say I don't like people in the middle, but that's not true. <laughs> <laughs> You're definitely doing your calling. Definitely. You have been a joy. We thank you so so much. It means you said you honored. We are honored by by everything that you do. We greatly appreciate you once again for taking time out of your day and getting up early. <laughs> it was all worth it. It was all worth it. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, Tell the people where they can follow you and find you on, on social media. Uh, at Lady GG50. And I always tell people I'm a lady. <laughs> my initials are GG and I'm in my 50s. So Lady GG50 on Instagram and on TikTok. Many blessings to you, your family, everything that you do. I believe God really has a calling for you. And I think you're going to go far. And like you said, just ride that wave, ride the wind and sit back and marvel at what you do because he's not done with you yet. You're doing some amazing Thank things. You. I appreciate it. And I got to give it back to y'all too. Sorry, y'all, man. I'm totally impressed. I'm a fan. I'm following. Uh -huh. I think I'm following everywhere, but I will go make sure. And I was telling people, so no, I, I, I love what y'all are doing too. Oh, I love man. to see my men, my brothers, my sons out there doing what they do. And, and by the way, where your dad is at? Never mind. <laughs> Hey, let me tell you something. That's that margarita from last <laughs> night, my bad. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you good. Oh, my God. Hey, I make a good stepmother. What's wrong with you? I don't know. No, no, no. See, you see my see my father, he's in the upper room or somewhere else. I don't know. But well, you're no longer with us, okay? <laughs> That man had a pass, okay? <laughs> so, <laughs> my daddy had a jerry curl before jerry curls were a thing. He even had a natural jerry curl. The man was still pulling women at 86, okay? What? Okay. I got you. Up in the hospital and got the nurses grinning. Uh. <laughs> the man is not here today because of a woman, okay? Oh, my God. Brought that man home from the hospital. The doctor told him. You need to go home and sit down now, Mr. Joe. You, you, you know, you've been in bed for two weeks and, you know, the blood clots and how you even explained it to him. Notice I just explained it. Okay. So <laughs> got him home. He didn't think the house was clean enough. Now, let's say, I mean, I got a husband, two kids, full-time job, taking care of you. Okay. Maybe while you was in the hospital, I didn't vacuum as many times as I could have. You know, you were sick. I was trying to take care of you. I'm going to get his medicine. We found all this out later, a little bit after the fact. He at home sweeping because his little girlfriend from down the street say, "Oh, you're home. that motivation! He's I'm gonna come up and check on you." <laughs> oh my god! I said, "If you don't sit down, I will sweep when I get back." Apparently, the man was sweeping while I was gone. Got one of them, you know, how blood clots work. Little blood clot got little. Every mm. time I see, would see that woman, I said, "See, because of you and whatever y'all was." Nasty. <laughs> <laughs> got him up trying to sweep so his woman can come see him because he oh. home from the hospital. I mean, you don't you sit there, to <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. I'm just gonna sip on you, Chris. That's all I'm talking. <laughs> <laughs> but let's just put it this way, Michael. As far as we know, that is my blood daddy. So that means I'm gonna last for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> I got you. I got you. Oh, but no, y'all keep it up. I'm gonna be checking on you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Be blessed and stay safe out there. I will. Same back at you. Yes, man. All right now. All right. All Bye, right. darling. Bye, -bye. <laughs>